this video lesson is all about what's known as the percent equation. And really, we've been working with a variation of the percent equation this entire time as we've been building up the idea of percents. Um, and we started with the idea of the bars and a percent problem as a proportion, which is really at its core what a percent problem is. But we can take what we know about the percent problem and manipulate it slightly to create a different version, often used as a shortcut called the percent equation. So first, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and work through this review problem here. What is 75% of 48? Now, I've included the bars here if you want to use it, but what is important is that you set up the proportion that we've been using to solve what 75% of 48 is. Pause the video and come back when you're ready to look at it. So let's take a look um, at this problem using the bars so that we can go through the entire process again. We are trying to find a percentage of this number 48. Since we're trying to take the percentage of that number, and we know, we know that that 48 is the total. Um, and with that 48 being the total, um, we don't know what number represents this percent, but we know that 75% on the 100% bar is somewhere around here. That is about 75%. It doesn't have to be perfect. After all, this bar is just an approximation. So we know that on a scale of 0% to 100%, that's 75, which means our missing number should be somewhere about there on a number line from 0 to 48. That number we don't know, so it's x. Um, and the proportion that we come up with is that our percent is always the percent number, whatever is attached to the percent sign over 100. Um, and then since the x is the same as the 75%, goes in the same half of the fraction in the numerator, um, and the 48 is the same as the 100, goes in the denominator. 75 or 100 equals x um, over 48, rather, not x over 100, x over 48. So when we um, solve this problem, we have we can solve it using our cross products. 75 uh, times 48 equals 100 times x. 75 times 48 is 3,600. It's equal to 100 times x. And dividing both by 100 with proper equation solving notation, the 100s cancel out, and we are left with 36 is equal to x. So our missing number is 36. 36 is 75% of 48. Now we want to look at this and think of this, um, particularly with the proportion that we use to set up the percents, um, and figure out if we can represent it a little bit differently. Take a second, pause the video, maybe 30 seconds to, to a minute. Think of some ways that we could potentially change this proportion we had before, x over 48 is equal to 75 over 100, um, so that we can make it maybe a little bit easier to solve or just is solved a little bit differently. Go ahead, pause the video, and come back uh, when you're done with that. Well, there's not a whole lot we can do with the x over 48. This just sort of is what it is. I mean, x is a variable. We can't really simplify it with anything with 48. Uh, but let's move this a little bit so we can have some space there. But we can do some things potentially to the 75 over 100. We could take the 75 over 100, and perhaps simplify it. x over 48, 75 over 100 is 3 fourths. And that makes it a lot easier to solve. Once it's simplified to 3 fourths, we can actually turn the 3 fourths into an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 48. But otherwise, 48 times 3 um, being 144 divided by 4 to become um, 36 is much easier to solve than 48 times 75, all divided by 100, when we actually go through with the cross products and set it up as the equation that it is. Um, but that's just simplifying the fraction. Another thing we could do is change that fraction, that percent, into a decimal. Now we know that this represents 75%, the 75 over 100. And from the lesson that we had on converting between fractions, decimals, and percents, we know that that, like 3 fourths, as a decimal is 75 hundredths. So we have x over 48 then is equal to 0 0.75. This is potential method number two that we could use to change this. Now this equation 
x divided by 48 is equal to 0.75 is much um, more similar to the initial types of equations that we started solving and is easier to solve than by using the cross products here. So let's take another example of a, of a percent problem and see if we can apply either of these two different ways of rewriting the problem to that also. So in this problem, try to solve 75 is 20% of what number? Go ahead, pause the video, set up that proportion, and solve it. And see if you can manipulate that problem in ways that makes it maybe a little bit easier to solve or just is solved differently. Um, like I said, go ahead, pause the video, and come back when you're ready for that. Well, so now we know our percent number. We know our percent number is 20%, which is about here. But here, we find that 75 is actually representing that smaller portion, that percent. So the 75 is this number. It's that part. It's that percentage. We don't know what the total is. That is what we're trying to find out. 75 is 20% of some total, and we don't know what the total is. So when we set up the proportion, we have uh, 75 over x is equal to 20 over 100. Now, if we solve this using the cross products, which is the traditional way that we have done it, um, which is one of the ways that I asked you to do it, 100 times 75 is 7,500. 20 times x is 20x. Let's write this is with CP, which is cross products. Now, if we divide um, 7,500 by 20, first dividing it by 10, well, I'm just going to divide it by 20 here, um, we end up with 375 is x. So this is our answer. x, our total, is 375. But now let's take both of those two methods um, and rewrite this proportion here a little bit so we can have it a little bit cleaner. And let's see what we can do with those other two methods. The first method was to try to simplify that, um, that uh, percent fraction there. So 75 over x. If we can switch, we can't really do much about this fraction. But 20 over 100 simplifies to one fifth. And in this case, if we do our cross, if we use our cross products here, x times one is x, and five times 75 really is just 375, as we had said before. Or this is method one. Or we could convert that 20% um, into its decimal. And the decimal, as we remember from our um, automatic percents idea and from our lesson on converting between fractions, decimals, and percents is just 0.2. So that changes this equation to 75 over x equals 0 0.2. Now this is not the easiest equation to solve. This is a little bit different than anything we've done before because now we have our x in the denominator. But um, we can go through this the same way that we do anything else. We need to get the x out of the denominator. I'm going to let that hang for right now, and we're going to look at it in class tomorrow to, so you can figure out how to do that. But I want to take a look at this second method now, and we'll come back to this question in class tomorrow. But take a look at this second method. What we've done is we've taken our original percent proportion when I've assigned some variables to it. P over 100, which is our percent, P being the percent that we have, is equal to A over B. Um, so A is that small portion of the number, perhaps big portion of the number, that is the percent. These two represent the same thing. And B is the total, because that's where it is in our um, percent proportion. So if we manipulate this a little bit using some equation-solving techniques um, that we know, but just applying them to variables, um, we can change this equation around. The first thing we can do is we can take P over 100 and just write it as P percent. So this A over B is just P percent, because we know that our percentage number is the same as that number over 100 uh, from when we first started learning about percents, but also from when we went through fractions, decimals, and percents. Now, if we wanted to get rid of the B in the denominator, whatever B is, on the left-hand side, we can just multiply that side by B. Um, I'll say that one more time. Uh, it's not a terrible leap from the equation solving that we that we've been doing, whatever this b is in the denominator, to get rid of it, as we do with solving equations, we just multiply that side by b. Well, since we multiply one side of the equation by b, we have to multiply the other side of the equation by b, and we end up with this form over here. This 
is the percent equation. This is what we call it. A equals P percent times B. So, but what we have to remember is that A is that smaller bit that represents that percent. B is the total. B is the number that represents the percent. So, A equals P percent times B. Now, this percent equation just comes from the setup of the proportion as we had been doing before. Once we understand how to set up the proportion, we understand the math behind the percent equation, and now we can use this shortcut. What's important here, the percent equation is what's written in red. In the percent equation, that percent, that P percent, must be written as its decimal or fraction form. So one of the things I'm going to ask you to do um, for class tomorrow is write down this slide here. This is the percent equation. Write down both of these parts here so you can see what each number represents and also write down this bit. Um, as you pause the video to write that down, uh, continue by writing a quick sentence or two about why you think that P percent must be written as its decimal or fraction form and we can't leave it just as 75 percent equals 75. Go ahead, pause the video, and come back when you're ready to move on to some example problems. So now let's go on to the example problems and look at solving them with the percent equation. Well, A is equal to P percent times B is what we have. Remember, A represents the number that is the percent, and B represents the total. So I'm going to set these up both in their proportions and then in their percent problems so we can see the comparison between them. What is 30% of 12? Well, 12 represents our total. So x over 12 is equal to 30 over 100. That's the proportion. Remembering that our percent equation has a over b, b that x over 12, we have x equals 30%. I'm going to write it like this for a second so we can see it times 12. Now 30% is just 0 0.3. Um, the decimal way is often an easier way to look at it. So x is equal to 0 0.3 times 12, and therefore x is equal to 3.6. Using the same math and the same setup with proportions and the same background, we can rewrite that proportion as the percent equation and find the answer x. Some people consider it a little bit easier. Um, some people like the proportions, but this is the percent equation as we were writing. 18 is what percent of 24? Well, 18 is the number that represents that percent. So it's going to have to be in the numerator along with the x because we don't know what percent it is. Uh, 100 is obviously the total under the x, and 24 is here. Now, this is a little bit more difficult to see in terms of the percent equation, but if we take this and for the moment write it as x percent, we have for a over b, we have 18 is some percent of 24. That is, that is what it is written as the percent equation. Now we're going to take 18 and we are solving for x, so we're going to divide these by 24. We pretty much get what we had before, which is 18 over 24 equals x. 18 divided by 24 is 0 0.75, so that is what that percent is as a decimal, so x is 75%. So 18 is 75% of 24, um, and finally 60 is 50% of what number? 60 is that 50%, it represents that part, not the total, the total is unknown, and we have 50 over 100, that is the proportion. We rewrite it in the percent equation, A being the part, B being the total. A is equal to P percent times B. A is 60. P is 0 0.5, um, or 1 half, because that's what 50% is, is equal to B. Divide both sides by 0.5 and end up with 120 equals B. So go ahead, pause the video, and work on these four problems. Um, using the percent equation rather than the proportion. See if you can set it up as a percent equation um, and then pause the video and come back when you are ready to go through the answers. So for number one, we have 42 is 60% of what number? 
42 represents the parts, the 60%, and not the total, which is unknown. So with A over B being the part over the total, um, and A equals P percent times B, we have A the part is 42, P the percent is 0 0.6, and B the total is unknown. That is our x. So 42 equals 0 0.6 times x. Now in order to solve this equation, we're going to take it and divide both sides by 0 0.6 because that's what's going to get rid of that. We're going to end up with just x alone. On one side, um, we need to find out what um, 42 divided by 0 0.6 is, and when you go through and do the math, um, you end up with 70. X, the unknown total, is equal to 70. For number two, 12.5 is 25% of what number? A very similar question to the one we had before. Again, A is that percent as a number or that part. B is the total. We don't know what the total is, but we know that A equals P percent times B. A as the part is 12.5. P percent is 25%, which is 0 0.25 or 1 fourth. Um, and B is our unknown. Let's leave it as B this time because after all, B itself is a variable. Divide both sides by 0 0.25 because that's how we solve the equation. That gets divided out, becomes just B. And 12.5 divided by 0 0.25 is 50. So, 12.5 is 25% of 50. Now let's go to number 3. 72 is what percent of 150? Um, here, we don't know what the percent is, but we still know that A is equal to P percent times B. Our percent is the unknown, so we're going to leave it as P percent. A is that part. It is the part of the number, not the total. So 72 is, that, is what represents that P percent, whatever it is. And B is the total, so that's multiplied by 150. Now to solve this, because we're solving for P, we just divide by whatever it's multiplied by, which in this case is 150. Get 72 over 150 is equal to P percent. P equals 0 0.48. So the P percent as a decimal is 0.48, so P is equal to 48 percent. 72 is 48 percent of 150. And finally, number four, what is 5 percent of 180? We d know what our total is, which is B. And so when A equals P percent times B, we don't know what A is because we don't know what our part is. We know what our total is rather than the percentage number. Um, the percent is 5%, which remember is 0 0.05 um, and not 0 0.5. That would be 50% times 180. Um, and if we take 0 0.05 times 180, we end up with 9. 9 is 5% of 180. So as a quick review, if we take that proportion that we have solved using uh, to use to solve percent equations, and we manipulate it a little bit, we turn it into what we call the percent equation. A equals P percent times B, where A is the part, uh, that number that represents the percent, whatever the percent is, and B is the total, is what we are taking the percent of. And very importantly, in the percent equation, P percent must be written as a decimal or a fraction. Part of your homework then is to think about and write a few sentences about why you think that is.